In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the maximum and minimum points of a function with calculus. The question reads, find the maximum and minimum points of the function y is equal to x cubed minus 3x. The first thing that we have to do is find the critical points of this function. And we do that by taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. Then we solve for our x values. So that's step number 1, y prime is equal to 3x squared, I use the power rule here, minus 3, using the power rule again. Next, I'll set y prime is equal to 0. 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 3. And we'll be solving for this x. So I'll bring this negative 3 to the left side, and that makes it positive. There's a 3 on both sides, and they can be canceled out, leaving us with 1 is equal to x squared. The last step is to take the square root of both sides, and if we do that, we end up with x is equal to plus minus 1. Now to find out the maximum and minimum points, what we have to do is evaluate the derivative at points that are less than negative 1, in between negative 1 and 1, and points that are greater than 1. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. So to do this, I'll create a small chart when x is less than negative 1, when x is between negative 1 and positive 1, and when x is greater than 1. So we can pick any random point that is less than negative 1. So let's use our calculator to do that. 3 times and any random number that is less than negative 1, let's say negative 2, to the power of 2 minus 3. That gives us a positive output. So I'll write down plus. Similarly, I'm going to pick a number that is between negative 1 and 1. The easiest number to pick is 0. I don't need my calculator for that, and I know if I put 0 into here, I get negative. And finally, if I put a number greater than 1, let's say 2 into here, I'll get a positive number. So we have plus minus plus. Now what does this mean? The reason why we do this test is because if the output of y prime changes from negative to positive, then y has a minimum at that stationary point. And similarly, if y prime changes from positive to negative, y has a maximum at that stationary point. So when we evaluated the derivative at a point that was less than negative 1, the slope of the tangent at that specific point, in our case it was negative 2 here, that slope was positive. So it was going upwards. When we evaluated the derivative at a point between negative 1 and 0, that slope was negative. That means it was going down to the right. And when we evaluated that derivative one last time, when it was greater than 1, we ended up with a positive slope, a positive rate of change. So if you think about this on a Cartesian plane, okay, so pretend that we have a Cartesian plane, an x and y plane right here, that's x and this is y. As the function is getting bigger and bigger, when it reaches x is equal to negative 1, it was going up. And then finally, when it reached x is equal to negative 1, it started to go down. So this is x is equal to positive 1. So it reached the maximum. And then at this point, it was its minimum point, And then it started to go back up again. Now, of course, this is probably not the way the function looks. It could be below. It could be higher above. I'm not too sure. I would need to graph it. But that's the whole purpose behind this. Therefore, there is a maximum, maximum when x is equal to negative 1. And there is a minimum when x is equal to positive 1. Now, just before I conclude, I want to say one more thing. If you want to find the y-coordinate of the minimum and maximum points, you will substitute negative 1 and positive 1 into the original function, y is equal to. That will give you the y-coordinate of these points. And so there you have it. That is how to find the maximum and minimum points of a function with calculus.